Hi again. Now, about Rachel Bruno's amazing interview on Persistence You with Lisbeth and what to do if you are ever connecting with Child Protective Services employees. If someone reports, this happens often in divorces or custody battles, uh, even with spouses that were never, or people who were never married, but who are getting back at the other person for the breakup of a relationship. If you are accused of child abuse, first of all, do not panic. I think one thing that looks so bad is when somebody understands that they are being accused of something so serious, but they don't have any control of their emotions and they immediately explode. That's a bad thing because it just reinforces a look of guilt. Um, keep in mind that child protective service workers don't have to have a warrant to remove children from a home if they suspect or fear imminent danger, but a parent has certain rights. So I want to go over some of the rights that I will link in the notes. As a person accused of child abuse or neglect, you have the right to be treated by uh, treated with respect and courtesy by social workers. You can't be discriminated against. You should not be uh, on the basis of age, race, national origin, sexual, um, well, being gay or straight, you should not be discriminated against and certainly not poverty. I think a lot of times people feel like, oh, that family's so poor, this mother has like seven kids or whatever and she's single parent. Social workers should take those kids away. You cannot hold someone's economic situation against them as child protective issues. Um, there are privacy rights that you have under the law as someone who's being investigated for abuse and those are pretty serious. So this is not like a crime that gets posted on the internet. This should give a lot of privacy to a family who is not under criminal investigation but is in civil trouble with the child protective services or at least they're investigating. You have the right to know what's going on and to get clear, honest answers. You don't have the right to be contacted every day necessarily, but you have the right to know where the investigation is going, what dates are going to be important in the case, when it will be dismissed, if it is, uh, all of those things. You have a right to have a relative, a friend, or someone else with you during meetings. Okay, You don't have to go all by yourself if you're called to meet with a social worker. You have the right to get um, information and other ways to get uh, to get some services if CPS can't help you, Child Protective Services can't help you. You have the right to have an attorney with you at every case, but you may be paying for that attorney. It's not always a free attorney depending on your community, the legal system, and where you're at with it. Uh, if you just choose to have one because you feel better, but you weren't going to court in the first place, they're not going to pay the bill for that attorney. I would get a family law attorney. You don't want a criminal investigation attorney, or you can get a defense attorney, but make sure they know child protective law. That's so much different than the criminal justice system. Okay. And you have the right to refuse to take part in the child protective investigation that comes with enormous risks. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, if a social worker says, don't worry, you don't have to talk to us, but the stakes are high, maybe it's a sexual abuse allegation, serious physical abuse allegation, or neglect such that the children are in peril if that allegation were true, the risk of not participating in the investigation is they may come and remove your children from you, period, until that information can be sussed out. Normally, they're gonna to have to get the court involved first, but that will hit you as a surprise, typically. And so, just know that you have rights, but you have some responsibilities. If you are somebody who's been in, you know, let's say you have issues of addiction or Maybe there's domestic violence in the home a lot, and there's some real things that put the kids at risk emotionally, physically, and otherwise. One of the great things you can do is ask that social worker to be on your team to get you the help and support that you need so that the kids are safe in the home. So 
that can be a wonderful thing, a really great relationship. If you're willing to be accountable and do the services asked, it can be a game changer. It's not always the kiss of death. If you are accused of something that you absolutely did not do and you speak to staff, whether it's police or social workers without an attorney, it can go really sideways. Listen to Rachel's interview. You'll know what I mean. All right. See you in the next one.